Right, so today we're going to be talking about another web service provided by Amazon, which is known as Elastic IP. Elastic IP is nothing but a static IP that's allocated to your EC2 instance. One thing to note is that the Elastic IP is associated with your AWS account and not with an EC2 instance. You can, at any point in time, associate the IP with another EC2 instance. So you can very easily disassociate an existing Elastic IP from an EC2 instance and just map it to another EC2 instance in your AWS account. Okay, so why exactly do you need an Elastic IP? Now there are many reasons why you need a static IP for your domain, but let's take one classic example. Let's say that you have a site called mysite.com and this points to an instance in your AWS domain which has a public IP. Now everything is humpy dory and works perfectly well. What happens if your instance is restarted? When your instance is restarted, AWS then takes another public IP from its pool and assigns it to your instance. This means that your original public IP is no longer valid. Oops, that means your link is no longer valid. Oops, that means that your site is no longer valid and is now pointing to an invalid public IP address. In such a case, it's absolutely necessary to have an elastic IP or a static IP which does not change when your instance restarts. I said this is just one of the examples. There are a hell lot of reasons why one would want to have an elastic or static IP. So come let's take a look at how we can actually do this using the AWS console. Right, let's get the show on the road. The first job is to log in to AWS console. Once you've logged in, you'll be presented with a dashboard. Within the dashboard, the next step would be to click on the EC2 option. Now for the purpose of the demo, I've already created one instance from before. So I have one running instance in my region. The name I've given to my instance is called Web Server, a pretty common one. Now if you look more closely into the details of the server, you will see that it already has a public IP address. This has been allocated by AWS automatically. But now since I want an Elastic IP, let me go on to the left hand side of the screen and click on Elastic IPs. Since I don't have any IPs allocated to me, I'll click on the button called as Allocate New Address. I will then be presented with the confirmation message. I will obviously click on Yes Allocate. I want the Elastic IP. And voila, it's just so simple. I now have an Elastic IP allocated to me. Once this is done, obviously the next step is that I want to assign this to one of my EC2 instances. The easiest way to do this is to click on the Actions button and click on Associate Address. I can then write the name of my instance. So remember the name of my instance was Web Server. So let me start typing this. You will see that automatically it is getting auto-populated. Now there's a warning message which just says that when I associate the Elastic IP address the public IP will be released. This is but obvious. Let me go ahead and click on the associate button. Voila. Now my EC2 instance has the Elastic IP address. We can confirm this by going to instances, going to the properties and yes, there it is. My EC2 instance now has an Elastic IP. It's that simple. AWS makes everything that simple. Let's have a quick summary. The first thing we've seen is that the Elastic IP is nothing but the static IP. Secondly, we've seen the steps on how we can use the AWS console to allocate a new Elastic IP to our account. Lastly, we've seen that once we have the Elastic IP, we can then associate that address to an EC2 instance.